Hey everyone, it's Carrie from Carrie's Wreath Creations. I am here today to show you how to cut poly burlap mesh using a wood burning tool. So if you're a wreath maker or if you've ever worked with poly burlap before, you know that it is prone to fray. So you get these loose edges that just kind of keep shredding off and it definitely detracts from the beauty of your wreath. So if you use a wood burning tool, um, you can kind of seal the edges which will prevent some of that fray. So I am gonna be showing this demonstration using poly burlap. Um, you could work, wood burn other types of mesh, but I would be very careful of the content of the mesh to make sure you don't accidentally light anything on fire. I know that poly burlap is fine with the wood burning tool. Um, I believe fabric mesh and regular deco mesh will work as well, but anything with burlap or jute content, be, please be very careful. I do believe those kinds will not work for this method. Um, so so safety first, uh, make sure when you're using a wood burning tool um, with the mesh that you are in a well ventilated area. I'm outside here in my garage, so I have the door open and I'm away from people and pets. Um, so make sure you're in a, um, a, large, uh, a large area that with good ventilation. Don't do this in a small room. And you also want to be wearing a mask or respirator. Um, you are essentially melting and producing toxic fumes when you do this and you don't want to breathe that in. So let's talk about the materials and supplies that you need here. I have my poly burlap. I'm gonna actually show a couple demonstrations. This is just sort of the basic poly burlap and then I have some with a little bit of a wider weave to show you as well. Um, this is my wood burning tool. I purchased this from Amazon. You can find it from most major craft stores. Um, I believe Hobby Lobby, I think even Walmart might carry this, perhaps Michael's as well, but you just wanna check in the section where they have um, wood crafts is most likely where you're gonna find that, but it uh, is on Amazon. This is a Walnut Hollow brand. It just has a simple on off switch and plugs in. And if you can see, I was kind of trying to show you before, this is the tip I'm using. So it does come with a couple of different attachments. Um, I've only ever used this one. You can see it's been very well loved, but we are good to go. It's nice and hot and ready to be used. And uh, you know, the fact that I've used it probably hundreds of times and I have some residue on there, it's, it's we're gonna work just fine, okay? It does come with a little stand. And if you look at what I have here, what I'm, surface I'm working on, the blue is a, cold, is a cutting mat, a self-healing cutting mat. You don't, want to, you don't want to wood burn directly on the mat because you will might melt right through it. The reason I have the cutting mat is so that I can see the dimensions. So normally I'm cutting certain size pieces of mesh. Usually it's 10 by 10 if I'm making a flower. Um, so I wanna be able to see the lines and the dimensions. Um, so that works well. I do have a glass cutting board over it. So this I purchased at Amazon. For all these things that I'm mentioning, you can check out the description box below. I do have an Amazon affiliate link, which is going to take you to um, my shop where I have the wood burning tool, the cutting mat, the cutting board, all kinds of other supplies that I use um, are, are in that shop so you can see exactly what I'm using, okay? So glass cutting board, I have that over my mat because then I can still see the lines. It might be hard to tell from the video, but I can see through this and I can see the lines so I know exactly what dimensions I'm gonna be cutting and I'm protecting my mat, okay? I've seen people say that, um, you know, they could use, I've heard people say, I should say, that they've used like cookie sheets. Um, I think that, that'll work, but again, you still need some way to measure. Um, but any type of heat resistant uh, tempered glass, I believe is what it's usually called, is going to work. So just make sure you're protecting your, your surface and we're good to go. So this is already nice and hot. So again, making sure that you are in that well-ventilated area, wearing your mask or respirator. So normally when you take poly burlap out of the packaging, it's already starting to shred. I've, I've actually already been working on this particular um, roll before, so I actually already have the edge sealed, but I'll go ahead and just show you how I would get that started, okay? so. I think one of the challenges that people have more often than not with the with the wood burning is that they're not going at the correct speed and they're also trying to cut a straight line as opposed to staying within the uh, the rows or columns between the the um, the squares here. So my recommendation, okay, and make sure I am I'm trying to make sure I'm in camera here. Um, you want to stay between the squares, don't cut on the lines, you wanna cut between the lines, okay? And even if your weave 
of your burlap. Sometimes it's a little crooked, but you gotta stay within that same row or column or else your um, final product, your square or whatever you're cutting is going to be off, okay? So even if it feels like you're cutting crookedly, you need to stay within the same row of squares, okay? So again, this is already sealed, but if I was starting off a brand new roll, the first thing I would do is just go in a couple of um, a couple of rows here, find a good spot. And again, I'm placing this, I'm holding it kind of like a pen, and I'm placing this right at the edge here in between the squares. And I'm just gonna, again, speed, the speed at which you go, I think, plays a big part in how successful you are, okay? So I'm going at about a medium speed here, all right? And that piece came off very easily, okay? And I do have that nice sealed edge, okay? So the chances of this fraying are not as good as it would be if I had not heat sealed it, okay? So um, it's still prone to fray. If you mishandle it, overhandle it, it gets snagged on something, it definitely can still fray, but this is very helpful to prevent some of those frays. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna show you again. Um, now, I would normally at this point be cutting a 10 inch piece, okay? My 10 inch mark is right here. It's, a, well, I guess I'm, sort of, I'm still in camera, so I can go ahead and cut that 10 inch piece, okay? Um, well, you know what, I'm a little bit towards the edge, so I'm just gonna cut you another piece. It's not gonna be anything that I'll use, but I'll just make sure I'm in camera here, okay? So again, you wanna go at kind of a, a medium speed. If you go too fast, you might get outside the lines. If you're outside the lines, that's gonna lead to some fray, okay? If you're all over the place, definitely more chance of it fraying. If you go too slowly, that's how you end up with those little black kind of pieces. Um, and, and, and a lot of smoking and things like that. So you really want a steady hand and to go at a medium speed. So I'm gonna just pick right here, okay? In between the lines, and I'm ready to go as soon as I put that pen down. Now, if for some reason, when you go through one time, if you have any little stragglies that are still hanging on, just kind of really lightly tap them, or you, you could pass through one more time, usually that's not necessary. But um, anything that's kind of still holding on there, just kind of give it a little light tap and that's going to release it so that way you're not, don't definitely don't pull on it. Okay, so there's my heat sealed edge. Okay, now there's other types of mesh, poly burlap. I'm, I'm sticking to poly burlap in this video. Um, so for example, let me get my, put this down for one moment. You may have seen, this still just says on the label, poly burlap mesh this out of the way here. Um, but if you look at this, the weave is a little bit wider. You can see the squares are a little bigger, okay? Um, you're not gonna really change anything you do here with this. Uh, it might be a little bit more difficult to find that exact 10 inch or whatever marking you're trying to do, um, but you're not gonna really change anything about the way you cut this. This is a brand new roll right out of the package. So for an example here, see how this is all shredded here at the end? So before I would start cutting my pieces that I'm gonna use on a wreath, I would go ahead and clean that up. So actually I kinda of like to do it this way whenever I can. Um, so all I would do is just go in a couple of rows and again, just medium speed. If you go too fast, you might miss some. I think this one, so I have, I mean, I could just kind of pull this. It's still hanging on a little bit. All I really do is go in here and just give that a quick little tap in those areas where it's still hanging on, okay? And that piece has come off and now I have my nice heat sealed edge. So I could go ahead and start cutting pieces off of this. And then the final one I'll mention, this tends to really trip people up and there are a couple ways to cut this kind. Um, that would be this, uh, it's the label says poly burlap check mesh. So as you can see, it has the really big squares. Okay. So people are, tend to get really confused as to where they want to cut this. So I've seen it done two ways. I'm always all about not wasting materials. So if you look, I actually worked off of this roll, row, roll, excuse me, already. So this is my heat sealed edge. If you take a look at that, you see how there's like three strands there at the top? And, uh, and then look at this next part here. There's like six strands. Uh, that's because I'm cutting kind of right down the middle of this 
area where you have these strands. Okay, so for example, let's just say I'm gonna cut right here. Okay, what I do is there's six little strands here and I cut right in between the third and fourth one. Now it's not exact because you do end up sort of hitting those strands sometimes if you're not super precise. But I do that because I still have a good enough amount of strands, I guess you would say, on the edge so that when I start folding my mesh, it's not gonna fall apart. What you don't wanna do is cut, I'm gonna end up wasting a lot of this, but that's okay, we're demonstrating. Don't cut right down the middle like this. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay. So, got a couple spots where it didn't really wanna release, so just kinda give that a little tap, okay? So here's the piece I just cut off, but if this was gonna be the edge of my mesh, this is pretty ugly. Sorry, I think this is pretty ugly. I wouldn't want this to be the edge of my petal. Plus you just, it's just a lot of loose stuff here that could potentially start fraying and becoming loose. So if you, for some reason, you just really don't wanna cut in between these lines like I showed before, okay? I have seen it done another way. I do believe this is a waste of your material. This stuff is not cheap, but it's totally up to you. And I do understand that sometimes if you're trying to cut exact squares, like 10 by 10 or whatever your measurements are, that sometimes cutting in between, uh, exactly in between these six little threads is sometimes difficult to get your exact piece. So I do understand that, but here's another way you can do it. So for example, um, let's just say, um, best, I'm trying to think of the best way to demonstrate this. So I have seen people just always, I guess the best way to explain it is just always cut either right before or right after those little six strands. So let's just say we do this. Okay. The animals are safely in the house, but if you can hear them barking, it's because I'm outside and they're confused why I'm outside and there's delivery trucks and stuff going by. Um, so, okay, let's say we're cut, we, we cut like that. And let's say then the next place we need to cut. So I, I, I've seen people do this where maybe this is where they want to start their next piece. And they, so they cut like right after the, the little strands. I, I know this might not be making a whole lot of sense, but it really depends on how big you're cutting those pieces. But I've seen people just say, okay, all of this is a waste and I'm throwing it out and just throw it out and start with, with this. This is certainly nice to look at, but it is a bit of a waste if you keep cutting a couple of inches of this mesh off every time. Um, that's just, my, my thing is to never try, never waste materials. So again, if you're, you know, if you cut with between, here's my piece that I did before, the like three little strands, you still have enough security on either end to fold a petal or use it in a wreath, okay? I hope this was helpful. Um, please check the description box below for some, you know, further explanation as well as links to my social media, my Etsy shop. Um, I do have quite a few other videos here on YouTube. If you'd like to subscribe, I would appreciate it. But until next time, hope this was helpful and take care everyone. Bye.